come in, come in. Entree boo, if you catch my drift. Laying eyes on you always gets me so excited. I guess the same could be said for you, right? Hey, why don't you just take a load off that little old mind of yours? Have a seat right over there. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Just a little practical joke to keep you on your toes. Okie doke, let's talk movie macabre, deal? Deal. Tonight, my little celluloid torture here on Movie Macabre is a little piece of fluff called The House That Screamed. It's the story of a guy selling tract homes out in the San Fernando Valley, and I have been boning up on my real estate material. Why, I'm just full of it. So, without further ado, and without further ado, let's get this show into escrow. The House That Screamed, coming right up on good old Movie Macabre. This is the boss, isn't it? That's right, sir. Put our luggage in the tavern and I'll come and pay you there. All right, sir. I hope I can hire a carriage here. Yes, I'm sure you will. This is my car. Visit me any time. Thank you. Au revoir. Come along, dear. Yes? I brought a new girl for the school. Right. Moliere was an absolute master, was an absolute master. 
in creating his characters. In creating his characters. He had an inimitable gift. He had an inimitable gift of portraying life, of portraying life in its most vivid aspects. In its most Mademoiselle Easy, you don't feel like writing this afternoon? No. I don't want to. <coughs> Perhaps you're also bored by the company of so many girls. How would you like to live a few days in complete seclusion? If I remember correctly, you've already had that experience. Would you like to try it again? As you wish. No, as you wish, Mademoiselle Lizier. I don't give a damn. I doubt that. You can doubt all you please. Very well. We shall see who's right. Mademoiselle Tupin. Yes, madame. Accompany Mademoiselle Lizier to the seclusion room and then come back at once, please. Here's the key. Mademoiselle Lizier. May I take a book with me? No. No doubt I'll see you later. Yes, we'll have a talk. <coughs> now, where have you come to? Oh. In its most vivid aspects. In its most vivid aspects. There's a gentleman with a girl to see you. They're waiting in the library. Girls, Mademoiselle Desprez will continue dictation in my place. <laughs> Mademoiselle Noël, are you too tired to stand up? Excuse me, please, Madame Fresnel. Which paragraph works? Go to hell. Monsieur Barnaby, I am Madame Fourneau, the principal of this college. What can I do for you? Pleasure to meet you, Madame. I'd like to enroll Mademoiselle Gravan as a pupil here. Are you a relative? No. Just a friend of the mother. We read your advertisement in the paper, and a colleague of mine recommended your establishment. But well, I hope you like it. Would you care to look around? Madame? This is the room for painting, drawing, and modeling. Three times a week, our pupils copy from real life in oil, aquarelle, and clay. Some of the paintings you see hanging on the walls of this establishment are the works of our pupils. This way, please. That line's supposed to go, walk this way, please. And then the girl says, heck, if I could walk that way, I wouldn't have to go to finishing school. Oh, look at this, darling. A thousand and one lucky loo jokes. Wait, this book would have come in real handy if the movie had anything to do with selling cracker boxes out in the San Fernando Valley, like I thought. Oh, how was I supposed to know? Sounded real estate to me. Well, who knows? Maybe I can learn something from a movie about finishing school. Mother always wanted to send me off to finishing school. She said I was kind of rough around the edges. I was always asking her, so, like, where are the edges, okay? She said I didn't know the meaning of the word tooth. Well... She was right. But if I would have known how to spell it, I could have looked it up. Besides, I, I never meet any guys that know from Cooth anyway, so what's the diff? Well, the 25 cent tour of the house, the screen, just coming right up, so stick around. <laughs> I 
I believe in healthy minds and healthy bodies for the girls entrusted in my care. This room's for music and dancing. Solfeggio is obligatory, but afterwards the pupils can choose piano, violin, harp, or the violoncello. The bar and the mirror are for belly exercises. I don't insist on them perfecting this art, but they must practice one hour a day. Besides providing them graceful movements, don't forget most of our pupils are no longer children, it also provides them as useful exercises and prevents them from indulging in morbid thoughts. You play the piano, mademoiselle? I learned a little three years ago, but I had to stop. But you still remember your solfeggio? Yes, I think so. What's the matter? Hmm? No, nothing. We want our girls to be expert in gardening. One of our pupils, Margaret Chagrin, became an authority on the subject. In our library, we have many of her essays on botanical specimens. They've been published by the Academy of Science. Oh, it's nothing, just a flower pot that turned down. It was probably the wind. This way, please. Our garden in springtime is the envy of the entire neighborhood. Naturally, we use Of course, our pupils are also given cookery lessons. As you know, culinary art is most important for future housewives. There's a very cordial atmosphere between our pupils. The ages vary between 15 and 21, but I'm sure that Mademoiselle will soon meet good and new friends among them, and that she will soon feel absolutely at home with us. This is the dining room. I could also show you the workroom and the reading room, but I don't want to tire. Would you like to see the dormitories? No, it's not necessary, thank you, madame. How old are you, mademoiselle? Eighteen and a half. Have you ever been to boarding school? No, madame. Ah, Marie. Please take mademoiselle Gravel to the dining room. Five o'clock, she might like some tea and biscuits. We'll join you there in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Shall we go into the library? Certainly. After you, madame. Please sit down. Thank you. Name of the parents, please. Her mother's called Violette Gravin. She's a very good friend of mine, as I said. I want you to know that we're very discreet here, particularly what concerns the parents of the students. So a friend of mine told me, Monsieur Moreau from Avignon, who recommended you to me. The mother of Therese only wishes she could educate the girl all by herself, but I'm afraid that at the moment she's not able to. Well, she can stay with us until she comes of age. All we need to know is the name and the dress of the person directly responsible for her. And the sum of 300 francs per term must always be paid in advance. All right. Mother's name is Violette Gravin. Place des Arts, Avignon. Avignon. For two terms in advance. Would you like a receipt? No, it's not necessary. This school specializes in students whose character is, um, shall we say, um, difficult. And there are few among them who, in spite of their youth, have not exactly led exemplary lives. In order to bring them back to the right path, I must run this establishment with a firm hand.
Amzel, would you be looking for something? No, nothing. Thank you. Have you finished your tea yet? Yes. Why don't you eat the biscuits? They're very good ones. No, I'm not hungry. Keep them then. You won't get much to eat for supper. Danny is the true, made his way to the fastness where Apollo rules on throne on high and to the vast cavern beyond, which is the awful Sybil's own secluded place. Here, the prophetic Delian god breathes into her the spirit's visionary might, revealing things to come. They were already drawing near to Diana's wood and the golden temple there. Diadalus, for this is the story, adventured his life in the sky. He consecrated his wings to Phoebus Apollo, for whom he founded a gigantic temple. On the temple gate, he pictured the death of Androgeus, and lower down, the Athenians obeying the ghastly Your command mom. to surrender seven of their stalwart sons' his annual repartation. And there was the urn from which the lots right. had just been drawn. The island in which Cronus stands, rising high above the sea, balanced the scene on the other loop of the gate. There he had depicted the bull's brutal passion and Theseus' secret union with him, and there in the midst as a warning against wicked love, their high-bred offspring child of two breeds, the Minotaur. Here wore the Cretan building in all its elaboration with the... Enough, Mademoiselle Perrier. You're excused, mademoiselle. Hey there, Butchie. That's a real swell tie you got on there. <laughs> well, I guess. But my taste runs a little less conservative. I like something with a pattern. Something like this? Or how about this? Or what do you think of this? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a pretty loud tie. <laughs> oh, hey. I would just like to know who is doing all that creeping around, peeking over the transom and lurking behind the doors. Well, it's enough to give even me, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, enough to give even me the jitters. I mean, talk about your looky-loos. Hey, maybe this movie will give that joke book of mine, a thousand and one looky-loo jokes, a new lease. New lease! Oh, did I say new lease? <laughs> oh, make that a thousand and two looky-loo jokes. New lease. I can't believe myself. I just killed it. I am so hysterical. I, what do I do with this book anyway? I What's your name? Teresa Cravan. Did you bring much luggage? Everything I own. I've run out of stockings. Can you let me have a few pairs? Shh. Oh, shut up, you. Mademoiselle Toupin, Fragonard, and Rigaud. Will you please come with me? All right, she's gone. What's her name? How did you get here? Where are you from? What's your 
Quiet a moment. Not so loud. Her name's Therese. Yes, Therese Gravin from Avignon. Oh, do you know her? My name's Elaine. Oh, Avignon. Isabel, Claire, Cecile. And I'm Suzanne. And my name's Margaret. Wait a minute. I'm Julie. You're so late to know us. Can we look at your luggage? Yes, of course. Most of these things, she doesn't need them. And did this belong to your mother? Yes. Well, I think it's lovely. Will you sell it to me? I'll give it to you. Thank you. And does your mother know anything about this school? Thanks. I think so. Do you think your parents will let you leave here if you want to? Yeah. Oh, of course. Then you won't be staying much longer. Three have already escaped. Therese. Mademoiselle Dupre will be here in a minute. Get ready quickly. Don't listen to those two. You won't find it all that bad here. Tomorrow when you see Catherine, that is unless they keep her another day and night in the punishment room, ask her what she thinks of the place. Who is Catherine? A very nice girl. Well, have you thought about your behavior this afternoon? Yes. Are you ready to apologize in front of your friends? Mademoiselle Izzy, I'm talking to you. Answer me. Get up. Get up! You're a very bad influence, not only on your friends, but on the other girls as well. I will not stand for your insolence any longer. Why don't you throw me out? Nothing I would like better. But your people insist that you must stay. This is not the first time that I must punish you. Remember? Now for the last time. Will you come down with me now and apologize in front of everybody? All right. Take off your clothes. This is an order. Take off your clothes. This time you will have to do it. As you wish. Go on. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Thou art our refuge and our shelter. Thou shalt be our shield and our strength. In your protection, we shall find peace and Thank you. 
Good night. Good night. Good night. Say your prayers. You made me do this again. Don't you realize that I can't allow anybody to define me? Not even you. You know this, don't you? Try to understand my position, please. Why did you watch the new girl and follow her around all day? It's not true. I saw you. Why do you always watch the girls and follow them around? I know you're not a child anymore, but you're not old enough to think about girls. Not yet. I forbid you to spy on them again. Do you hear? I can't afford to have a girl come to me complaining of my own son. Or have her parents come to see me? And with good reason, do you understand? Yes, Mother. Then why do you keep on doing it? I'm tired of saying the same thing over and over again. But, Mother, if I sometimes leave Don't my room... Don't you understand because... that none of these girls are any good? By the time they bring them to me, they're already marked. If they're not... Well, you know what I mean. They've stolen. Or done worse things. And then they hand them over to me. A correction. Impossible. In time, Louise, in time, you'll find the right girl. You'll marry her. You'll have your own home. These girls are poison. You need a woman like me who will love you, take care of you, protect you. We'll find them. We'll see. All right, all right, who's been going through my drawers? And, and who took my favorite green corset? Oh, sheesh, for a private school, there sure ain't a whole heck of a lot of privacy around that joint. And what about that headmistress? Let's talk about her, okay? When she said she had to run the school with a firm hand, that didn't sound so bad. But she didn't say anything about the whip in her hand. Now that is what you got to look out for. Well, maybe some of those girls are into that sort of thing. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's what they mean by different strokes. Oh, and speaking of different strokes... No, yet another clever segue. Speaking of different strokes, I wonder what's really going on between that mama's boy and that boy's mama. Maybe he's looking for a girl just like the girl who married dear old dad. Stick around, this could get very interesting. Good morning, mademoiselle. Good morning. Good morning, madame. She's not married. She's still an old spinster. Today, the bed will be made by Suzanne Noel and Catherine Lessier. But you know Catherine's not here today. I said today the bed should be made by Suzanne Noel and Catherine Lessier. But as Catherine is not here, then you can take her place. Me? Yes, you. Suzanne will tell you what has to be done. We're ready, mademoiselle. All right. Mademoiselle, come to breakfast now. Not much to do. Just make the beds and open the windows. No sweeping? No. All the rest of the cleaning and dusting is done by Lucy. She's a maid who works in the kitchen as well. Don't worry, we'll finish this in no time. 
boyfriend? You got a boyfriend? No. You mean, uh, you've never been out with a boy alone? No. Really? Yes, really. I'm glad for your sake. It's better for you. You won't mind being locked up here without boys. As for me, I can't stand it. The rest of the bad things aren't important. But to go months and months, you know, without seeing any boys. Why, most of the girls here are on the verge of a nervous breakdown. Every three weeks, a young man comes to visit here. Here? That's right, here. His name's Henry. He delivers wood from the village. Not much to look at, but... Anyway, he comes to stock up the woodshed outside. Each time, one of us has a chance to meet him there. Next time, it'll be my turn. How do you mean, your turn? Yes, we all draw lots to see who's going to meet him each time. But you'd understand better why we do it if you'd had a boyfriend before. Oh, I understand. I think that all the girls who ran away did it because they wanted to be with their boyfriends, or find one. And that's why the only one who doesn't mind being here is Isabel. Isabel? Yes, Isabel DeLong. She sleeps just over there. She's a blonde about 15. Oh, yes, I know her. Well, she's in love with Madame Fano's son. A son? Yes, he's on the second floor. I suppose he's about 16 or 17 years old. Personally, I think he's stupid. He's a peeping Tom as well. He spends most of his time watching us through any door or window he can find. Isabel, of course, thinks he's terribly intelligent. Do you mean they meet? Oh, yes. When Mademoiselle Dupre is in charge of class, you can always slip away. <laughs> Continue tomorrow. I came after lunch. But you've been here more than three hours then. No, oh, it doesn't matter. Oh. Did anyone see you come in? No, I don't think so. I'm terribly worried in case they find out about you. Worried for your sake, I mean. And I'm worried for your sake. Is that for me? Yes. For you. Thank you. you again and again. It doesn't matter. I can't. I can't nor want to go on like this, having to hide so that we can meet all the time, frightened that at any moment they might catch us, and that...
Well, we plant the seeds here. Later on, they start shooting, we put them into flower pots. And what do I do? Oh, it's very easy, like this. A hole, another one, another one. All at equal distances. Then when you finish the whole box, you start planting. Here are the seeds. Put them in the holes and you cover them up with earth. And then cover it all with this stuff. It's fertiliser. Fertiliser? Yes, you know what I mean. Oh, well, I think you know. Oh, it, it's for growing. It turns them into plants. What seeds are they? The same as, you know, the poisonous plant. Well, they say the seeds are as well, so be careful. Don't believe it, Therese. If those seeds were poisonous, Madame Fanoe wouldn't be alive today. Oh, I'm sure we've all put a lot of those seeds in her supper. Any news of Catherine? Nobody knows. When do the seeds become plants, then? Oh, months. During this time, you will have to tend them and plant them and transplant them and water them and water them and fertilize them a bit, and then in the end, they flower. They flower, we cut them, then of course they fade and die. And all this stupid waste of time is what they call the art of gardening. The art of gardening is the poetry of nature. <laughs> Teresa, come and see Madame Fanoel. I haven't finished yet. Doesn't matter. All right. Where can I wash? Do it later. She's waiting for you. What do you want? Don't know. But where's Madame Fanoel? I called you. Come in. I'm making some tea. Would you like some? This morning I left you alone with Suzanne on purpose. She talks a lot. And I imagine by now that you know how the school is run. No. Didn't she talk about me? No. Are you sure? Yes, of course I am. Didn't she tell you about Henry? And about what goes on in the shed every three weeks? Yes. She told me that. So she did tell you? I don't understand. I'm the one who organizes everything around here. Amongst others, the visits to the shed, on the day that Henry comes, and many other things which you'll find out soon. Madame Forno doesn't like anyone lacking in discipline, and it's up to me whether she finds out or not. Have some tea. What have you been doing? I was gardening. Wash your hands. It depends on you whether your life here in school will be nice or not. I can see to it that you eat well and that you don't have to work too hard. I can even let you meet Henry. All you have to do is obey me. Obey me in everything I tell you. Cockroach problems in your home? Get the professionals on the phone. <laughs> yes, La Cucaracha Pest Control, the professionals. Next time one of them nasty little critters scampers past your tea and toward your crumpets, don't start shrieking or eek, eek, eeking. Just pick up your telephone and call the professionals. <laughs> La Cucaracha Pest Control, over 10 billion served. We'll send over a trained and somewhat qualified expert to put an end to all those cockroach blues once and for all. Satisfaction is guaranteed. Unless, of course, you happen to be a cockroach, then the guarantee is off. That is La Cucaracha Pest Control. They're all over the Southland. This is the third night they've kept Catherine locked up She's there. used to it. Don't go out dressed like that. Why? Any men around? It's freezing. Put something on.
no toilet paper. Good night, mademoiselle. Good night. Good night. Good night. leave here last night. It is better for you to tell me all that you know now. I must warn you the key to the punishment. that anyone covering up for her will be punished in exactly the same way as the one who escaped. This morning, when Mademoiselle Dupré came to wake you, this door was open. 
Therefore, Isabel Delorme left this way. She must have used a key or something, and a key makes a noise. Well, I see by the door, but I heard nothing. That's very strange, Mademoiselle Toupin. Especially since you're the only one with the key to the dormitory. The keys that you gave me were with me all the time. It would be impossible to take them without waking me. Well, if any one of you thinks of following in the footsteps of Mademoiselle de Lorme, I advise her to do it very well and very secretly. Don't let me catch you at it. For if I find another girl trying to escape, well, you know me by now, don't you? Have the locks changed. It's the dormitory and it's the door. How many keys shall I get? Three. One for me, one for you, and one for Tupac. You don't think Irene Dupin helped Isabel to escape? Irene? No. Get a carpenter. Have every window on the ground floor nailed down. If they want to escape, they will. This is a boarding school, not a prison. If it isn't one, we'll make it one. Go to the village, please, and see if there's any news of Isabel. Yes, madame. But it's Tuesday today. The girls take their showers. Who will be there? I will. ready for you now. Thank you. Hurry up, girls. Hurry up. Hurry up.
you think you're doing? Taking this off. I want to really wash my back for a change. I think you know why. Does it bother you? No. Mademoiselle Gravin. Mademoiselle Gravin! What to do? You can come out from under the shower. Yes, madame. <laughs> Doing, Teresa. What do you do in the boiler room almost every afternoon? We've seen you go in there several times. But you've seen me there. One of the things that Madame Fonro resents most is any one of us talking to her son. Didn't you know? All three of us can swear that Lewis and you have locked yourselves in there alone quite a few times. We want to talk to you later. After the music class. We'll expect you in the dining room. And if you're not there, We'll have to talk to Madame Furner. Sorry, Uncle Perv. Tough luck. I know you were counting on seeing something in that shower scene that you just seen. Well, it don't work that way, okay? I happen to know that proper girls always wear clothing when taking a shower. As a matter of fact, the more proper they are, the more clothes they wear. That's a fact. You, you call it Eddie quite. And not only is it the proper way to shower, but it also affords you the golden opportunity to get your laundry done at the same time. Saves water. Personally, I don't do my laundry that way. No, personally, I don't even do my laundry. But proper girls do, and that's what we're here talking about right now. Right? Right. Why, you can also use the occasion to, to water your plants, and I'll just bet if you just sat down and made out a little list, you could come up with lots of other swell things to do in the shower. <laughs> I don't think you'd want to watch Movie Macabre in the shower, but who knows? Who am I? Woodman's just arrived. You want a hand? No, I can manage. When I'm finished unloading, I'll give you a shout and you can lock up the shed. Mm. Very well. Right. Needlework can be very beautiful. Especially when you learn how to mix the colors. It's almost like painting. Excuse me, Madame Fonneau. 
But an hour ago in our cookery class, we used up some apples to make a stew. We left it on the stove. So I wonder, could one of us possibly go and check it? Yes, of course you can go. Well, if you don't mind, I'd rather finish this. Could I send... Suzanne? All right, you can go, Mademoiselle Noel. Yes, madame. Well, how's it going? Oh, it's all right, but it's not ready. Have they put you in charge? I'm in charge of everything today. Cooking and the gardening and the greenhouse as well. Keep an eye on this a moment, would you? I must go over and check the greenhouse. All right, but don't overdo it. Thank you. We're not supposed to help you girls with your cooking, you know. Yes, yes, thank you. What are you looking at, Mademoiselle Chausson? Uh, nothing at all, madame. Just taking a rest from sewing. Again. Do you mind? Finished for today. Yes, Mother? What were you doing in the garden? I needed some fresh air. Well, as the girls were having their music lesson, I thought it would be all right. Now? It's much too damp for you. Come inside. You know you have to be careful. But I am careful, Mother. No, you're not. You read at all hours. You don't sleep enough. You don't eat enough. 
But, Mother, I'm not... How am I going to run this establishment if I have to look after you all the time? You know you're not like ordinary boys. You've always been sick. Remember your asthma? No, your chest. I know it's hard for you to be always indoors, but it's absolutely necessary. Doctor said so. It's either that or the hospital. Yes, Mother. Oh, I would love to send you to college to be with boys of your own age, but at the time, it's absolutely impossible. I know, Mother, I know. More than anything in the world, Louis, I would love you to lead a normal life. But you must help me. And above all, I would like to trust you. But why do you say that, Mother? I always do whatever you ask me to. Really? I know you meet one of the girls nearly every afternoon. It's not true. You've been seen. By whom? Never mind by whom. I don't even know which girl it is. But I'll find out. Oh, I should really send you away, you know. But there isn't a school that would accept you in your present state of health, so I have to keep you here. Louis, I've told you a hundred times. None of these girls is any good to you. You need a woman like me, who loves you and takes care of you. Now, promise You'll never see that girl again, ever. I promise. Thank you. Thank you, Louis. You'll see. The day will come, not so long now, when you meet the right girl. And you will fall in love with her. The kind of girl I used to be. Can you see? Strong. Capable. And she'll live for you. The way I live for you. And she'll love you. The way I love you. No. Well, where then? You'll see. But where? You'll see. Why, Lockie? Go on, then. Was she late? No. She came to the dining room as soon as the lesson finished. That's good, Therese. I like order and punctuality. Come in. This afternoon, after needlework, I spoke to Madame Fourneau. And I told her that her son often goes to the boiler room to meet someone. Don't worry, Therese. I didn't say it was you. Come in, Therese, dear. Come in. You should have seen Madame's reaction. She said she's going to expel the girl after writing to the father. By the way, Therese, you haven't a father, have you? Therese, dear, I asked you a question. Have you or not? No. My father's dead. Are you sure? Yes. You're lying. My, mo my mother's a photograph. It's a very old one. But that could be anybody's. You've got your mother's name, haven't you? Well, have you or not? Yes. In Madame's office, there's a register of all the girls. And as I'm in charge of the correspondence, I get to know a lot of things. So don't try and deceive me, Therese, dear. Make us some tea.
What does your mother do? Therese, we want to get to know you and get to know all about your family. Do you understand? Yes. Your mother works? Yes. What else? Um, well, she sings. Oh, a singer? Yes. Opera? No. Where does she sing, Therese? Um, uh, in Avignon. Oh, how interesting. Bring us a tea. So your mother works in Avignon, but that's a town. In which theatre or concert hall does she sing? I said in which theatre? In... in the Tivoli. The Tivoli? But that's a music hall or something worse. What is the Tivoli, Therese, dear? What is the Tivoli, Teresa? It's a cabaret. A cabaret? But those places are only for prostitutes. Is your mother one? Teresa, I'm asking if your mother is a prostitute. No, 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 she isn't. I think she is. No, she's a singer, that's all. Your mother's a prostitute. No, like all the women who no, go to those kind of places. Don't no, you it? No, I she is, she is. Oh, I think she is. Don't no, tell me lies. No, your mother's a prostitute. No, she is. Don't talk is. nonsense because no, I know very well. No, she's your mother's not. Mother is an honest this lady. Thing. All she does is sing, no, sing no, for the gentlemen no, who come no, to see her. No, and to sing, she wears these sort of clothes, no, right? No, yes, I think this is your mother's, isn't it? Of course it is. I find it in your pocket just like the one you wear in the lane. Now put it on! No, put it on! No, put it on! No, 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 you wouldn't like my dad no, to find out a shoe who sees her son in the afternoon please, and all the girls who no, know what kind of wife your mother does. Now put it on! No, you will put it on! We've never been to a cabaret. And we'd love to know what goes on in there. That's why you're going to sing a song from your mother's repertoire. Do you know any? No. And your mother never heard her songs? And your mother never sang any of them at home? I'm sure you remember some of them. Or some of the words, at least. Come, sing a little, and then we'll leave. Sing, Teresa. Sing. Sing! This is the moon, and no. Louder, Teresa, louder. This is the moon, and no. We still can't hear you. Louder and smile. The moon, uh, no, Teresa, louder, Teresa. This is the moon, uh, no. Teresa, smile, Teresa, and come on, sing louder. <laughs> moon, now, come on, Teresa, sing. Sing, Teresa, sing, Teresa. Moon, that uh, isn't singing, sing. No, yeah, it's better, it's coming, Teresa. Well done, now smile more. No, smile more. And now louder. Moon, uh, no. Better, Teresa, uh, better. Come on, smile like your mother. <laughs> I'm sure that your mother smiles much more than that. Now, doesn't she? Smile. Come on, smile. Smile more. Smile and sing louder. Come on, louder. I can't. I can't. No one can hear you. Louder. No, sing louder and smile. I can't. Smile, Teresa. Smile. We'd better be going. <laughs> all right, Teresa, get dressed. Tomorrow we'll go on. All right? You know, I mentioned that my own sweet mom wanted to send me off to finishing school, right? I just wonder if... That's the kind of finish she had in mind. Ew. I mean, I have heard of class cut-ups, but this is getting a little bit out of hand, you know? Tell you what I'd like to know. I'd like to know what all the baloney is about that little twerpo suffering from asthma. I mean, I haven't heard that little mama's boy doing any wheezing or anything. And if all that coal dust down there in the boiler room didn't give him an attack of the wheezes, nothing will.
I think the only wheeze in this story is the one he's pulling on his mother. He has got her totally convinced that he's a sickly little runt, and all the while he's getting more action than the last male fruit fly left in San Jose. He doesn't want to be shipped off to some military academy. Heck no! Not with all that talent around. And he's good when it comes to knowing how to pick them. He gets the girls who kiss, but never tell. <laughs> So they gave away, piece by piece, everything they owned to the people. Hearing about this, Lucia's betrothed was furious and complained to the consul Pascasio, saying that Lucia was a Christian and was not obeying the imperial law. Pascasio, having sent for the young girl to appear, reproached her for having wasted away her time. Anything wrong? And demanded that she should offer sacrifices to the gods. What's the matter? I'm leaving. I must get away from here. I came to say goodbye. 
Come in. You're going? Where to? Any place I can think of. Anywhere but here. Why? It's not important. Did my mother do something? No, but she knows we see each other. She knows I see one of the girls, but not which one. She'll know soon enough, but that's not the only reason I'm running away. Well, why then? Because today... It's nothing. I don't want you to leave. You're the only friend I ever had. You know that. I shall miss you. I'll miss you. But you may need it. Thank you. I promise I'll return it. It's going to be very difficult for me to get out of here. Yes. As several girls have already escaped, Mother ordered all the doors to be double locked. Yes, I know that. But if I can get into the garden through one of the dining room windows, then perhaps I can climb the wall. You won't be able to. It's very high and the gardener cut down all the creepers on purpose. Try to climb the iron gate. Yes, all right. Goodbye, Lewis. Thank you. I'll bet right now you're saying to yourself, gee, that sure was a swell jester when that kid broke open his piggy bank for poor little Therese. <laughs> swell jester, my elbow. It was empty, wasn't it? And don't believe for a minute that it's the thought that counts. Trust me, it's the money that counts. That is a cheap trick, keeping an empty piggy bank around to crack open. I mean, he probably crazy glues that sucker back together afterwards. So Teresa's has had it with all the boarding school abuse, verbal and otherwise. Well, maybe she's just a little too thin-skinned for that sort of environment. The girls were only having a little fun and Girls will be girls when they ain't busy being something else. What? More fun and games when the house that screamed continues on movie the car. <laughs> Thank you. 
What are you doing here? To climb the wall without a ladder? It's impossible. But perhaps there's some loose bricks or some cracks in the wall she might have used. No, madame. Over the main gate. That's the only way out. She did not leave by the gate. Very well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Risha, nail down every window in the dining room. Yes, all right, madame. Teresa never left this house. Don't be absurd, Irene. Last night I was constantly by the gate. I was watching the house all the time. Teresa never left it. Perhaps she, uh, she left before you even reached the gate. I don't think so. Everything seems very strange, madame. What do you mean by strange? I'm thinking of the broken window, and the light I saw in the dining room, and the wet patch on the floor. Five girls have disappeared in less than four months. Therese is the fifth. In every reformatory or boarding school, girls are always running away. Yes, but in time one hears from them, their parents write or bring them back. But I'm in charge of the correspondence here. We've never heard from any of these girls again. Well, perhaps they got home and their parents just 
Never bother to write. Well, then why didn't you write to them to let them know what has happened? Are you telling me what I'm supposed to do? I am telling you that strange things happen here. You and I know about them. It was you who taught me. But there are other things that I cannot and shall not tolerate. What are you talking about? I don't know, madame. Um, I really don't know. Two, All I can say is that I'm leaving. You're staying, Mademoiselle Toupin. Nine, How will you stop ten. me? You'll find out. I don't think it's wise for you to force me to stay here. Remember that I know many things about you and your methods of teaching. Whatever I do here is no different from what is done in any other school. Are you sure, madame? Your keys. Teresa's plans for getting away were thwarted, were they? Oh, poor dear. That's what happens when you plan such a complicated escape route. I never saw anything like it before. First she risks her neck getting outside. Then she managed to get back inside, only to struggle to get back outside again. And I am going, hey, I'm lost, okay? And I was beginning to wonder that... Oh, now who the heck could that be? Hello, who is it? <laughs> Hello, Elvirus? Is this the party line? Ha! Oh, well, what do you know if it ain't crazy old breather? Yes, it's crazy old breather, that party animal. Get down! Ha! How's it going? Ha! Well, since you called it, it's going downhill. No, I shouldn't really put him down like that all the time. After all, he is my biggest fan. He even told me to just call him Roto Rooter. He's always at my disposal. Hey, Elvis, I got another really funny, wacky breather gag for you. I wish somebody would come up with a breather gag. Okay, hit it. All right. Why did the monkey fall out of the tree? Gee, I don't know. Why did the monkey fall out of the tree? Because it was dead. <laughs> it was dead. Like fell out of the tree. Virgil shows an exquisite sensitivity. Virgil shows an exquisite sensitivity. In portraying his characters. In portraying his characters. Who are profoundly human. Mademoiselle Lézier. Yes? If... Nothing. Continue. Profoundly... The, 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 the Romans considered the, the Romans considered the Aeneid the, the Aeneid as a pies and cakes need lots of strength and patience just like children I remember my mother used to say the harder you beat the pastry before you put the pie in the oven the softer it would be in the end let's see you'll have a lot more work to do yet how about yours very good you can go upstairs keep on going Knead the pastry gently but firmly to get the best results. Once the pie is in the oven, it's very important to keep the heat inside at a constant temperature. Otherwise, the pastry will be heavy. 
The baking time can only be learned by experience because we can't see what's going on in the oven. <laughs> if we could see, life would be much easier. It's all packed. What should I do with the drawings? Burn them. How about the kitchen window? It's easy to open. Do you remember if this door has a key? No, I think it's lost. And the kitchen? No, never. Good. Are you going to escape today? If I can. Let's see. Very nice. Very nice. Well? Oh, you could do better than that. Pay more attention. Not bad. Let's see. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, for what we are about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Amen. 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 Mademoiselle. Come in. They're all in bed now, madame. Is there anything more? Good. Did you lock all the doors? Yes, madam. Well, then, you can go to bed now. Sophie. Madam. I would like to talk to Tupin. Is she already asleep? I don't think so. I've just put the lights out. Please. Tell her to come and talk to me. And... Uh, You can go to bed now. Yes, madam. And put out the lights, please. Yes, madam. Sleep well, madam. Good night. Mademoiselle Toupin? What's the matter? Go downstairs for a moment. Madame Fano wants to talk to you. Why are you dressing, mademoiselle? I'm feeling cold. You've got your keys? Yes, of course. Right. Until tomorrow, then. Good night. Good night.
Mademoiselle Toupin Irene?
I'm so glad you've come. Come in. I was just going to call you. Look, there she is. Only the hands were missing. Irene had the same hands as yours. Slim, but strong. Look, I took the dress some time ago, when I decided to make a girl, like you. A girl for me. Now she's got everything. Blonde hair like yours. The same eyes. Isabel had almost the same eyes as yours. You always said I'd have a, have a girl like you when you were young. And now I've got her. Do you see? Now you must teach her to take care of me the way you do. And love me as you've always loved me. Talk to her, mother. Talk to her. Kids, kids, you just shouldn't take your mom all that, all that literally. I mean, when your mom says, for example, pick up your room, she doesn't mean go outside and lift the house off its foundation, does she? No, of course not. And when she says, this weekend you're grounded, she doesn't mean you have to spend Saturday and Sunday with your head stuck in the quizzing art. Heck no. And when she says, Johnny, go make your bed, she doesn't mean in the romantic sense. You gotta learn to read those things as merely figures of speech. Remember that. And remember this too. When she says, take out the trash, don't be calling me up for no dates, okay? Ha, 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 ha.